Big matchup Sunday when the Seahawks flock to Jerry's world. Good news for Cowboys Nation. Dez said he had a great day of practice. However, the Cowboys have not declared him ready to return. He has now missed five games. As for Seattle, Richard Sherman said it's a fun challenge to cover Dez and that they've had some pretty cool battles. Seahawks Cowboys, a matchup of Skip and Stephen A's NFC Super Bowl picks. Pierre Garcon is back with us. You know quite a bit about that conference. But I want to start with Skip here. Skip, who wins it? Stephen A, I tried last night to talk myself back into my Cowboys, and I failed. I told you earlier this week, I don't love this matchup for them. My Cowboys don't consistently play very well at home, as Pierre can attest, because Pierre's team <laughs> won there on a Monday night last year. And the last 11 times the Seahawks have played a backup quarterback, they have won 10 of those 11 games. I stand by what I said earlier this week. I fear that the Legion of Boom will make Matt Castle an afternoon snack. I think they will feast on that afternoon snack and that Matt Castle is capable of throwing three more interceptions in this game. Obviously, my Cowboys showed they can run the heck out of the football against Molly's and Stephen A's Giants. 233 yards rushing. 152 from Darren McFadden. So last night I tried to talk myself into maybe if they run it 45 times, just try to drain the clock, keep the score low, make a few first downs running the football, maybe they could hang in this game. I, I just don't love it. I, I don't love it because my defense has been maybe even worse than my offense. And I mentioned to Pierre in our last segment, my Cowboys have not forced a single turnover since Tony Romo went out in the Philly game. So the last four games, zero turnovers for my Dallas Cowboys. Last year, I remind you, my Cowboys had 31 turnovers for the regular season, which was second in the NFL to Houston's 34. I don't know what's happened. Russell Wilson, they've had a hard time protecting him. Maybe they can knock the ball out of his hands a couple times, force a couple of fumbles but I don't love my chances here. I, I just think that Dallas will struggle to score. My defense will struggle to keep Russell Wilson from making a few big plays. And in the end, Seattle waltzes out of Texas Stadium with some revenge over last year up in Seattle when my Cowboys shocked them and knocked them off their high horse up in Seattle, 30 to 23. I'm gonna say this one, Stephen A. Seattle, 24, Cowboys, 10. Mm. Sounds about right. Um, I, 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 I'd say somewhere along the lines of 22 to 13, to be quite honest with you. I think it'll be a little bit closer than that. I think there's a little bit of respect uh, that you should be giving the, C, uh, the Dallas Cowboys defense that you're not giving them right now. I think since Hardy has been back and Rolanda McClain has been back and Randy Gregory has been back, I think their defense uh, is much improved. I just think that the offense is not doing that much for you, so it puts them in the untenable position of having to carry too heavy of a load. Last, last week against the New York Giants, they only gave up 13 points. They limited to Eli Manning 170 yards passing. It wasn't the defense's fault that Dallas lost that game. That was about a, a, a pick six on a part of Matt Castle because Terrence Williams didn't run the right route. You can admit that, Pierre Garçon, when you get your opportunity <laughs> to speak here about how a wide receiver can potentially not run the right route or not be aggressive in his route running enough that causes the quarterback to look bad. That ain't your case in D.C. because it's usually Cousins' fault and not Charles. But nevertheless, that was the case last week with Dallas and Matt Castle and Terrence Williams. That was Terrence Williams for that pick six by Dominique Rogers Cromartie. And then, of course, the special teams were special in a bad way. They decided not to show up. <laughs> they decided to just sit there and, and take and take a, a, a possession off and just let Dwayne Harris run 100 yards for a, a kickoff return for a touchdown immediately after Dallas tied the score in 2020, which just infuriated Greg Hardy and had us talking about how out of control he is because he was getting in their face when he was right to do it with their pathetic selves, to be quite honest with you. Now let's get back to the Seattle-Dallas game. 
I'm going to tell you why else, Skip, that I don't think you're giving the Dallas Cowboys. I can't believe I'm saying this because we know I have no love for them because they have the worst fan base in America, their pathetic fan base that they are, acting like they won a championship when they haven't won three playoffs, when they haven't won more than three playoff games in 20 years with their pathetic, sorry fan base selves that the Cow Cowboys nation is. But I will give the team some credit. The team itself can get to Russell Wilson. The Seattle Seahawks have allowed 31 sacks this year. Russell Wilson has been sacked 31 times. That is the worst in all of the NFL. Yes, you got Royals and Marshawn Lynch is back now, so you can run the football effectively in all likelihood. They seem to be implementing uh, uh, Jimmy Graham into the offense a little bit better. Lockett, both Lockett's are somewhat of a threat, so we'll give credit. Well, Lockett, the rookie, is a big-time threat, but we'll give credit where credit is due. But the flip side to it is that if they throw the ball, you can get to Russell Williams because Russell Wilson, rather, because this offensive line, dare I say, Okung, Britt, Nowak, Sweezy, Gilliam, these guys ain't that, they haven't been that impressive. They were impressive against San Francisco, but they haven't been that impressive. So you've got that going on. If you can get to Wilson, you might be able to cause some havoc and at least keep it close. I believe the Seahawks will win this game. I believe it will be along the lines of something like 23 to 13. I'm, I'm not going, it hasn't gone unnoticed that Cam Chancellor, in the five games that he has been back, Skip, Seattle has surrendered a combined 20 points in the first half of the games since he has returned. The problem is their lack of depth compared to what they had in the past isn't present now. So as a result, they might wear down a little bit in the second half, which means that the Dallas Cowboys might need to stick to a run. Hopefully McFadden can do some things for them. They will lose this game. Seattle will win this game. But it's not like, oh, my Lord, there's just no way possible because it seems like you can get to Russell Wilson. And if you can get to Russell Wilson, you might be able to, dis to, to disrupt some of the things Seattle's want Seattle wants to do. Go ahead, Pierre. Um, I agree. I think, you know, Seattle's going to probably – walk away with this one, but I think the Cowboys will definitely play him good. It's going to be a defensive matchup, but I think um, Matt Castle is definitely going to use um, Jason Witten a lot. He's definitely going to get him the ball, get him comfortable, get him going, and try to, you know, depend on that running game um, as well, you know, to get those guys going um, in the offensive line going, but I think it will be a defensive matchup. Seattle is a great defense, and, um, you know, Des Bryant, if he plays, you know, you don't expect him to shock the world, you know, coming back off an injury and missing four or five games or how many he missed, but um, it's definitely Seattle looks to be favored, but Matt Castle can't surprise us. A quick question and then a quick statement. Number mm -hmm. one, I think Dez needs to be careful, and I would prefer that he not come back to play this game, especially since all somebody has to do is step on his foot, and it's a wrap. He might need to be careful about that. Maybe sit out an extra week or two. As it pertains to what you just said, your prediction, Pierre Garcon, is that football analysis or is that wishful thinking? Because if the Cowboys lose, that puts the Redskins in a better position. I mean, I, I mean, is that what it's all about, man? That's what, that what it's all about. about. It's all about my team and, and what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, definitely, okay. Seattle oh. take this, taking it. Okay, Redskins. allow me to add Stephen A. Smith to, the, to your Des point. I told you earlier this week on the show. My fear isn't that anyone will step on Dez's foot. I, I just fear he'll step wrong running a route and it will crack again. We saw Kevin Durant need two more procedures before he got this Jones fracture right in his foot. God bless him, I hope he can stay healthy through this year. But it can be an ongoing problematic kind of injury. I think they are rushing him back. I wish I'm with you that the, he would wait at least one more week. I am holding out hope that maybe my Cowboys could w beat the Eagles next week and then go win at Tampa so that when Romo returns at Miami on November 22nd, they might have some far-fetched long-shot hope of climbing back into this division race. But in the end, what I loved about Stephen A. Smith's analysis of this game, he actually made some case for my Cowboys. I did. Again, underlining the fact that Stephen A. Smith is a closet cowboy fan. We Whatever. know it. We Whatever. see it on a daily basis Please. on this show. Please. He's a closet cowboy fan. Please. We Please. get the only it. Thing, only thing I like it. about the only thing I like about them is their stadium. 
Jerry World, <laughs> the billion dollar playpen is beautiful. Outside of that, I mean, the players are cool. You know, I love me some Dez, but the fan base yeah. is the worst in America. <laughs> They're an atrocity. No. It's bad for this country, for the Cowboys to be as popular as no. they are because it speaks to our willingness to accept mediocrity as something to celebrate because the Dallas Cowboys haven't given anything us, given us anything to celebrate in the last 20 years. The fan base for the Dallas Cowboys are devoid of reality. They're the worst in America. I can't stand them to save their lives. And I'll tell you this about Des Bryant. Skip Bayless, you do know this. If Regardless of whether Romo comes back or not, your pick of the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl against New England, it's over. If Des Bryant gets hurt, you know it's a wrap, right? It, there's no way I that y'all are winning without Des Bryant. <laughs> I just want you to know that. I agree. Okay. Just so long as you know. Okay. Okay. You got me. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Pierre, can I get a score quick? Um, Give it up. Uh, it'll be a defensive battle. Uh, uh, Come 10 on, to, man. 10 to 17. 10 to 17, yeah. Seattle? All right. Yes. We'll leave it there. Pierre Garcon for office. Senator Garcon. <laughs> Senator Garcon. <laughs> Let, you know, let, let's start the campaign. Right. Him, and Jay, him and Jay Feely, the two best politicians in the NFL. It's something special, boy. I'll give it to you. Way to go, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> PC, it's all good, Pierre. You're staying here with us un for this undefeated showdown between the Packers and Broncos on Sunday night. Pierre's also going to make a pick for this one. Stay with us. Big matchup Sunday when the Seahawks flocked to Jerry's world. Good news for Cowboys Nation. Dez said he had a great day of practice. However, the Cowboys have not declared him ready to return. He has now missed five games. As for Seattle, Richard Sherman said it's a fun challenge to cover Dez and that they've had some pretty cool battles. Seahawks Cowboys, a matchup of Skip and Stephen A's NFC Super Bowl picks. Pierre Garcon is back with us. You know quite a bit about that conference. But I want to start with Skip here. Skip, who wins it? Stephen A., I tried last night to talk myself back into my Cowboys, and I failed. I told you earlier this week, I don't love this matchup for them. My Cowboys don't consistently play very well at home, as Pierre can attest, because Pierre's team <laughs> won there on a Monday night last year. And the last 11 times the Seahawks have played a backup quarterback, they have won 10 of those 11 games. I stand by what I said earlier this week. I fear that the Legion of Boom will make Matt Castle an afternoon snack. I think they will feast on that afternoon snack and that Matt Castle is capable of throwing three more interceptions in this game. Obviously, my Cowboys showed they can run the heck out of the football against Molly's and Stephen A's Giants. 233 yards rushing. 152 from Darren McFadden. So last night I tried to talk myself into maybe if they run it 45 times, just try to drain the clock, keep the score low, make a few first downs running the football, maybe they could hang in this game. I, I just don't love it. I, I don't love it because my defense has been maybe even worse than my offense. And I mentioned to Pierre in our last segment, my Cowboys have not forced a single turnover since Tony Romo went out in the Philly game. So the last four games, zero turnovers for my Dallas Cowboys. Last year, I remind you, my Cowboys had 31 turnovers for the regular season, which was second in the NFL to Houston's 34. I don't know what's happened. Russell Wilson, they've had a hard time protecting him. Maybe they can knock the ball out of his hands a couple times, force a couple of fumbles but I don't love my chances here. I, I just think that Dallas will struggle to score. My defense will struggle to keep Russell Wilson from making a few big plays. And in the end, Seattle waltzes out of Texas Stadium with some revenge over last year up in Seattle when my Cowboys shocked them and knocked them off their high horse up in Seattle, 30 to 23. I'm gonna say this one, Stephen A. Seattle, 24, Cowboys, 10. Hmm. Sounds about right. Um, I, 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 I'd say some.